one of the popular machine learning models out there is KNN. So let's discuss this. Um, so KNN is a non-parametric model. So what's the difference of parametric and non-parametric model in the context of machine learning? Um, so parametric is uh, if it makes some assumption on the distribution of data. Non-parametric, no assumption. Parametric models are simpler and faster. Non-parametric, slower in inference. Parametric models um, do require less data points for the most part. And non-parametric ones are the opposite. It requires lots of data points. Parametric models, um, well, some examples of it are um, linear and logistic regression, non-parametric, um, KNN, SVM, decision trees. And there's a caveat here. Categorization is really fuzzy. Yeah. Let's see. There's a discussion here. Uh, of course, I've included the link if you want to read the technicalities of it. But at a high level, yeah, you have these general categorizations. So, okay, K in your stables. Um, this is, I would say, one of the easiest ones, if not the easiest, because you simply store all of your data points. The general idea with KNN is um, you determine the class based on its neighbors. For example, you have this green um, data point here, and you're looking at your three nearest neighbors. What is green going to be? What is the color based on its neighbors? What do you think? You have class blue and class red. What is the predicted class? If you have this example right here, it's class red, right? So that's simple. So yeah, that's KNN at a high level. <laughs> Very simple to understand, but of course to implement it um, is another thing. Although it's really easy, but, but anyway, um, let's discuss this more. So we start with our data. So you have um, temperature, humidity, and the weather. Those are your three features. Or sorry, we're trying to predict the weather class here. So we have two features, two inputs, temperature, humidity. And then we're trying to predict the weather. We have snowy, sunny, and rainy. So given X, um, we want to know Y. X is the temperature and humidity, your two features, and then Y is the weather. So for example, um, you have a uh, temperature of 21, the humidity is 17. What do you think is the weather? There is no exact um, match here from what I can see. So how do we now know? Right? There is no exact match. Okay, so let's try to determine the closest value, yes. So how do we know which one is the closest? So let's try to look at this. You have snowy, rainy, sunny, right? So these are your uh, these are your data points. This is your initial data, the training data. And um, here are the values that you have. So it's x, y, it's two dimensions. So it's easy to visualize. But um, when you do actual ML, you're dealing with hundreds of features or dimensions. So we want to predict this. So anyone is 17. They're very easy to determine visually, right? You know already the class, but uh, let's do this together. So how do we determine the new um, class of this new input that we have? So basically you're just getting um, the dominant class based on the nearest neighbors. So this label, the category, snowy, rainy, sunny, you just get the maps. So let's try to do this. Call the nearest, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so um, there are different distances that you could use. We remember to use Euclidean, but you could use Manhattan. There are lots of distances um, here. So this data point, let's determine the values of the neighbors. So for example, uh, we, we compute the distance of this data point with all of the data points in our data set. 
So what's the distance of um this green data point and this um unlabeled data point that we have? Using this distance measurement, we see Euclidean here, we get a value of 21.19. That is the distance between these two data points. Following so far? We're using Euclidean distance here. So following thumbs up if you can follow that. This one, this one, that's the distance. Okay, you want to see the previous one. What do you want to see, uh, Nathan? Previous equation, which one? The parts, ah, sorry. Uh, to put it simply, you're just getting the, uh, the dominant class. That's what this thing means, part max. The different categories. So you just count the different categories of the nearest neighbors and you get which one has the highest count. That's it, it's that simple. Look at this, for example, if you have um, all of these data points, you look at the three nearest neighbors, I see that they're all blue, so the class is blue. Blue is rainy. But that's um, identifying the predicted class visually. We're going to have to do it, of course, computationally. Okay, Nathan, got it? Square, yeah, we're using Euclidean distance. That's uh, Euclidean. So, um, square root of the difference of, sorry, square root of the sum of the distances of all the features, dimensions. So here, would Manhattan distance not suffice? You could use whatever distance measurement want to use, but typically we use Euclidean. You could use a higher order distance measurement, not an issue. Yes, for this instance. But yeah, we typically use Euclidean. So to put in simply, we just use Euclidean. Euclidean distance, okay? Okay, so that is the distance. So with, with for all data points. So look at the distance values. So which one are the lowest? Of course it's blue. We know that already. But yeah, just, just look at the values, right? We have different distance values, blah, blah, blah. Now we want to uh, identify the nearest ones. Sorry, put it like this. It is blocking my screen, sorry. Zoom is blocking. Uh, so if our k is equal to one, uh, k is like uh, our variable for the number of neighbors that we're looking at. If k is equal to one, so you simply look at your closest neighbor. It's this one that is gonna be your uh, predicted class. It's this one, five, the lowest, so it's blue. Yep, how about this one? If we have this data point right here, we compute the distances. So which one is the nearest? It's still blue, 12.20. This one is the nearest. So we say that um, this new data point here is class blue, right? How about this one here, 7.6? Visually, you know that it's orange, but okay, let's compute. So the lowest is 8.24. This one is the nearest based on Euclidean distance. So use that class. But what if k is equal to 3? Uh, so it's um, orange, blue, blue. So what's going to be the class if you see this? What do you think? What do you think? This one, what's gonna be the class? Based on what you're seeing here, it's blue. It's blue because you have two classes here. K changes, uh, what does it mean with K changes value? 
um, sorry, uh, if, if you have questions, can you put it, um, can you make it public so that the others can see? So anyway, the question is, uh, what does it mean if K changes value? If K is, that uh, is one of the parameters that you set for the model. So if K is equal to one, then you're saying that I want to, I want my K and N to identify the next, sorry, then the predicted class based on the um, nearest neighbor. If it's k is equal to three, then I want to determine the predicted class based on the three nearest neighbors. So that's what k means. If I change this, then I'm just saying I'm gonna look at the um, k na nearest neighbors. That's why it's k nearest neighbors algorithm. So you look at your three nearest neighbors. Yes, k is the nearest, the number of nearest neighbors. So replace k with any value, k nearest neighbors, um, three nearest neighbors, four nearest neighbors, five nearest neighbors, whatever. Uh, however, what if the three nearest neighbors are three distinct classes? Then you use the one with the the um, lowest value, the lowest distance. So, okay, let's do it for this other one. It's going to be blue again, obviously, because there are two here. How about this one? It's going to be orange. Ta -da. So, K nearest neighbors. Seems all instances correspond to the points in the n dimensional space. Ta -da -da -da. Uh, here, the, here it is. Just an example. Um, you have uh, input data set like this, zoo data set having 16 dimensions. Could be could be any other data set. You're not limited to two dimensions. Could be 16, could be 100, could be 1,000 dimensions. Yeah, for the labels, values may be discrete. Classification problem could also be a numerical, but uh, that's something for David. Okay, let's test. Uh, this is for this is again for continuous values. Okay, let's, let's just look at the values here. Okay, so uh, this is now um, non. This is uh, the regression counterpart. So let's do this again. Um, Let's look at the nearest neighbors. Just another example. Oops, 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 oops. Oops, where is it? I think I deleted it. In any case, uh, what I'm trying to show here is that um, for the regression counterpart of it, if you're trying to predict the numerical values instead of the classification, then you're just getting the average of the nearest neighbors. So yeah, you just get the mean of their values. Yeah, for the continuous values, get the mean of the nearest neighbor's value. So you have these values here, just get the mean of these data points. And that's gonna be your predicted value. 